1 Chronicles chapter 4 The descendants of Judah Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal Reiah, son of Shobal, was the father of Jehath, and Jehath the father of Ahumai and Lehad. These were the clans of the Zorathites. These were the sons of Etam, Jezreel, Ishma, and Idbash. Their sister was named Hazalel Ponai. Penuel was the father of Jedor, and Ezer, the father of Husha. These were the descendants of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah, and father of Bethlehem. Ashur, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hila and Neara. Neara bore him Ahuzam, Hepha, Timani, and Heahashtari. These were the descendants of Neara. The sons of Hila Zireth, Zohar, Ethnon, and Koz, who was the father of Anub and Hazobiah, and the clans of Ahahel, son of Harum. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Kelab, Shuha's brother, was the father of Miha, who was the father of Eshton. Eshton was the father of Bethretha, Perzea, and Tehina, the father of ur -Nehash. These were the men of Rika. The sons of Kenaz, Othniel and Sariah. The sons of Othniel. Hathath and Mionathai. Mionathai was the father of Ophra. Sariah was the father of Joab, the father of Jeharashim. It was called this because its people were skilled workers. The sons of Caleb, son of Jephune. Iru, Elah, and Naam. The son of Elah, Kenaz. The sons of Jehalalel. Ziph, Zipha, Tyria, and Aserel. The sons of Ezra. Jetha, Mered, Epha, and Jalon. One of Mered's wives gave birth to Miriam, Shammai, and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoah. His wife from the tribe of Judah gave birth to Jered, the father of Jedor, Heba, the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zenoah. These were the children of Pharaoh's daughter, Bithiah, whom Mered had married. The sons of Hadiah's wife, the sister of Nahum, the father of Keilah, the Garmite, and Eshtemoa, the Maacathite, the sons of Shimon, Amnon, Rina, Ben-Hanan, and Tylon, the descendants of Ishai, Zoheth, and Ben-Zoheth, the sons of Shelah, son of Judah, Ur, the father of Lika, Leada, the father of Marasha, and the clans of the linen workers at Beth Ashpia, Jochem, the men of Koseba, and Joash, and Seraph, who ruled in Moab, and Jeshubai Lehem. These records are from ancient times. They were the potters who lived at Nataim and Gedira. They stayed there and worked for the king. The descendants of Simeon, Nemuel, Jamin, Jerib, Zira, and Sheul. Shalom was Sheol's son, Mipsam his son, and Mishma, his son. The descendants of Mishma, Hamuel, his son, Zakur, his son, and Shimei, his son. Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brothers did not have many children, so their entire clan did not become as numerous as the people of Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Molada, Hazashuel, Bilha, Ezem, Tolad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazasuhim, Beth Birai, and Shearaim. These were their towns until the reign of David. Their surrounding villages were Etam, Ain, Rimon, Token, and Ashan, five towns. And all the villages around these towns, as far as Baalath. These were their settlements, and they kept a genealogical record. Meshobab, 
Jamlech, Josha, son of Amaziah, Joel, Jehu, son of Josabiah, the son of Sariah, the son of Asiel. Also, Elioenai, Jeacoba, Jeshoshiah, Asiah, Adiel, Jesimiel, Beniah, and Sizer, son of Shiphai, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimrai, the son of Shemaiah. The men listed above by name were leaders of their clans. Their families increased greatly, and they went to the outskirts of Jidor, to the east of the valley, in search of pasture for their flocks. They found rich, good pasture, and the land was spacious, peaceful, and quiet. Some Hamites had lived there formerly. The men whose names were listed came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. They attacked the Hamites in their dwellings and also the Meunites who were there, and completely destroyed them, as is evident to this day. Then they settled in their place because there was pasture for their flocks. And five hundred of these Simeonites, led by Pelatiah, Neariah, Rephiah, and Aziel, the sons of Ishai, invaded the hill country of Seir. They killed the remaining Amalekites who had escaped, and they have lived there to this day. 1 Chronicles chapter 5 The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. He was the firstborn, but when he defiled his father's marriage bed, his rights as firstborn were given to the sons of Joseph, son of Israel. So he could not be listed in the genealogical record in accordance with his birthright. And though Judah was the strongest of his brothers, and a ruler came from him, the rights of the firstborn belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel. Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel. Shemaiah, his son. Gog, his son. Shimei, his son. Micah, his son. Reiha, his son. Baal, his son. And Beira, his son, whom Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, took into exile. Beira was a leader of the Reubenites. Their relatives by clans listed according to their genealogical records. Jael, the chief, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel. They settled in the area from Aroa to Nebo and baal Meon. To the east, they occupied the land up to the edge of the desert that extends to the river Euphrates, because their livestock had increased in Gilead. During Saul's reign, they waged war against the Hagrites, who were defeated at their hands. They occupied the dwellings of the Hagrites throughout the entire region east of Gilead. The Gadites lived next to them in Bashan, as far as Salika. Joel was the chief, Shaphan the second, then Janai and Shaphat in Bashan. Their relatives by families were Michael, Mashalam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachan, Sia, and Eber, seven in all. These were the sons of Abihael, son of Hurai, the son of Jeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshisha, the son of Jado, the son of Buzz. Ahai, son of Abdiel, the son of Gunai, was head of their family. The Gadites lived in Gilead in Bashan and its outlying villages, and on all the pasture lands of Sharon as far as they extended. All these were entered in the genealogical records during the reigns of Jotham king of Judah and Jeroboam king of Israel. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had 44,760 men ready for military service. Able-bodied men who could handle shield and sword who could use a bow, and who were trained for battle. They waged war against the Hagrites, Jetur, Nafish, and Nodab. They were helped in fighting them, and God delivered the Hagrites and all their allies into their hands, because they cried out to him during the battle. He answered their prayers, because they trusted in him. They seized the livestock of the Hagrites, 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, and 2,000 donkeys. They also took one hundred thousand people captive, and many others fell slain, because the battle was God's.
and they occupied the land until the exile. The people of the half-tribe of Manasseh were numerous. They settled in the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, that is, to Senia, Mount Hermon. These were the heads of their families, Ephah, Ishai, Eliel, Azriel, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel. They were brave warriors, famous men, and heads of their families. But they were unfaithful to the god of their ancestors and prostituted themselves to the gods of the peoples of the land whom God had destroyed before them. So the god of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, that is, tiglath pileser king of Assyria, who took the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh into exile. He took them to Hela, Habor, Hera, and the river of Gozan, where they are to this day. Acts chapter 7 Then the high priest asked Stephen, Are these charges true? To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance here, not even enough ground to set his foot on. But God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land even though at that time Abraham had no child. God spoke to him in this way. For four hundred years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and ill-treated. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out of that country and worship me in this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. And Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob became the father of the twelve patriarchs. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So Pharaoh made him ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Then a famine struck all Egypt and Canaan bringing great suffering, and our ancestors could not find food. When Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our forefathers on their first visit. On their second visit, Joseph told his brothers who he was, and Pharaoh learned about Joseph's family. After this, Joseph sent for his father Jacob and his whole family, seventy-five in all. Then Jacob went down to Egypt, where he and our ancestors died. Their bodies were brought back to Shechem and placed in the tomb that Abraham had bought from the sons of Hamor at Shechem for a certain sum of money. As the time drew near for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt had greatly increased. Then a new king to whom Joseph meant nothing came to power in Egypt. He dealt treacherously with our people, and oppressed our ancestors by forcing them to throw out their newborn babies so that they would die. At that time, Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. For three months he was cared for by his family. When he was placed outside, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was forty years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. He saw one of them being ill-treated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was ill-treating the other pushed Moses aside and said, 
Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. After forty years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight. As he went over to get a closer look, he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groaning, and have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses they had rejected with the words, Who made you ruler and judge? He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself, through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out of Egypt and performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and for forty years in the wilderness. This is the Moses who told the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our ancestors, and he received living words to pass on to us. But our ancestors refused to obey him. Instead, they rejected him, and in their hearts turned back to Egypt. They told Aaron, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. That was the time they made an idol in the form of a calf. They brought sacrifices to it and reveled in what their own hands had made. But God turned away from them and gave them over to the worship of the sun, moon, and stars. This agrees with what is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings for forty years in the wilderness, people of Israel? You have taken up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Rephan, the idols you made to worship. Therefore I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the covenant law with them in the wilderness. It had been made as God directed Moses according to the pattern he had seen. After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob but it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands, as the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? Says the Lord. You stiff-necked people! Your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the Righteous One, and now you have betrayed and murdered him. You, who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, 
Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Psalm 135 Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord, you who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name, for that is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob to be his own, Israel to be his treasured possession. I know that the Lord is great, that our Lord is greater than all gods. The Lord does whatever pleases him, in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and all their depths. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. He struck down the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn of people and animals. He sent his signs and wonders into your midst, Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants. He struck down many nations and killed mighty kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. And he gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to his people, Israel. Your name, Lord, endures forever. Your renown, Lord, through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites, praise the Lord. House of Aaron, praise the Lord. House of Levi, praise the Lord. You who fear him, praise the Lord. Praise be to the Lord from Zion, to him who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 11 The Lord detests dishonest scales but accurate weights find favor with him. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless makes their paths straight, but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. Hopes placed in mortals die with them. All the promise of their power comes to nothing. The righteous person is rescued from trouble, and it falls on the wicked instead. With their mouths the godless destroy their neighbors, but through knowledge the righteous escape. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. When the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. Through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted, but by the mouth of the wicked it is destroyed. Whoever derides their neighbor has no sense, but the one who has understanding holds their tongue. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisers. Whoever puts up security for a stranger will surely suffer, but whoever refuses to shake hands in pledge is safe. A kind-hearted woman gains honor, but ruthless men gain only wealth. Those who are kind benefit themselves, but the cruel bring ruin on themselves. A wicked person earns deceptive wages, but the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward.
Truly the righteous attain life, but whoever pursues evil finds death. The Lord detests those whose hearts are perverse, but he delights in those whose ways are blameless. Be sure of this, the wicked will not go unpunished, but those who are righteous will go free. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who shows no discretion. The desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. People curse the one who hoards grain, but they pray God's blessing on the one who is willing to sell. Whoever seeks good finds favor, but evil comes to one who searches for it. Those who trust in their riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Whoever brings ruin on their family will inherit only wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and the one who is wise saves lives. If the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner?